Hello friends, in this lesson we will learn about selecting colors using swatch panel. Let's first talk about picking the foreground and background colors. Down here you can see these two boxes, black and white. These are the foreground and background colors. With this top box black, if I take my paint brush and paint, it paints black because black is on top and it is the foreground color. Let me undo. Now if I click on this color swatch, it will bring up this color picker. This one here is the color field and this is the strip. With this slider, we can choose a large range of colors from red to yellow to green and any variation on our entire color spectrum. Now once we choose our color, say I, I choose this aqua blue color. Let's use this color field. From left to right is the saturation value from zero to full saturation of this blue color. And from top to bottom, we have full brightness to zero brightness. So this area allows us to choose right amount of saturation and brightness of the selected color. If we click and drag our cursor, you can see the live update here. Whatever color we are selecting, we can see the live, live update. Below this swatch is this swatch. This says the current foreground color. Our current foreground color is black, so it is showing black. It helps us to compare the current color and the color we are trying to select. If we think that we want the earlier color, just click it and it will select that color. Now select a color and click OK. You can see that it is now loaded as our foreground color. Let's start painting. To flip these colors, just click on this double headed arrow. It will switch the foreground and the background colors. Now if I paint, it's painting white because white is now the foreground color. The keyboard shortcut to switch these foreground and background colors is X. As I tap X key, you can see that the background and foreground colors are switching. To set these colors to default black and white, just click on this icon here. You can see that it has changed it to the default black and white color. The keyboard shortcut for default color swatch is D. If I choose another color and if I press D, it switches it to the default background and foreground color. Let's again click on this foreground color and start selecting a color. Now as I click and move my cursor, you can see these values changing here. Just keep an eye on these values. These will keep changing. These are the hue, saturation and brightness values. And this is the red, green and blue value. If we know the exact value, we can enter manually. We can also enter CMYK values. These are the RGB values and these are the CMYK values. If you remember from the earlier lessons, CMYK is for the printing and RGB is to be displayed on the monitor. This is the hexadecimal value. If we know the exact hexadecimal value of any color, we can enter it here manually. Now this small dot against this edge means that we can control the hue from this strip like so and the rest of the values from the field. If I move this, the hue values remains the same, other values are changing. Now if I select saturation, this strip will control the saturation. You can see it is controlling the saturation and the field is controlling every other value. Saturation is still because it is controlled by the strip. Same way we can type the RGB values if we know the exact values. Suppose I want a full red that is 255 and 0 green and 0 blue. You can see that it is selected a pure red color. Red color. I will tell you about this 255 value in a while. Press OK. Now our foreground color is red. Let's again click it. We can also select a color from the canvas. As we move our cursor to the canvas, you can see it changes to this eyedropper. Now I can select any color from the canvas. Suppose I select this green color, you can see it has selected this green color. Now these are a couple of warnings here. This one is our gamut warning. You must pay attention to this if you want to print your image or you want to display it on a monitor other than a computer monitor. Below is this web safe colors. For most modern technologies, you don't have to worry about this. 
In earlier times, the computer monitors were not able to display so many colors, but that's not the case anymore. Let's now talk about this color and swatches panel here. This one is the foreground and background color swatch and these are the RGB values. This is the mini color strip. You can see that our foreground color is black. You can see that all RGB values are 0. These colors run from 0 to 255. 0 means no intensity and 255 means full intensity. This value 255 means that an 8 bit image can hold 255 variation of these three colors and by mixing these three we get the entire range of color in our image. To change the foreground color we can either do it from here or from here as well. We can also play with these sliders and this will change our foreground color. As I move these sliders this color is changed you can see it is it has been loaded here also. We can also move our cursor on this strip and choose a color like so. Now our foreground color is this. Let us set our background color. Click on this background color. You can see a small border around it. It means it is selected. If I select this and choose a color. Okay. Now let's say we want to keep these two colors. This green and this yellow for our future reference. This swatch panel helps us to do that. Click on it. Here we can store any color and recall any color from here. To save a color here. We will bring our cursor here. You can see that the cursor changes to this small black arrow with a paint bucket beside it. Now if I click here, it shows me the yellow color which is my background color because it was selected. I can name it my yellow. Ok. You can see that it has recorded it here. Now if I want to save the foreground color as well, I will go to color, I will select the foreground color, go to swatches, click here and you can see it is showing this green color. I will name it. Okay. You can see both these colors are here. Now suppose at any point of time I click on D and make it default. Now if I want to go back to those colors I can select these. Now this is my foreground color and to select it a background color go to color, background, go to swatches and background. Cool. We got them back. Another method of choosing a color is to use an eyedropper tool directly on the canvas while painting. With my paintbrush tool selected, if I press alt on my keyboard, my cursor changes to this eyedropper. Suppose I was painting with a yellow and I want to choose a color, I press alt and click a color. You can see my foreground color is this color now and I will start painting with it. Another thing I want to tell you that when I am pressing alt and trying to select a color you can see this circle. I am still holding my left mouse button. The outer circle is 50% grey. This one is to create a contrast between the canvas and our color picker. And now inside there are two semicircles, top one and the bottom one. The bottom one is the color we were painting with and the top one is the new color that we are selecting from the canvas. If I let my mouse go, you can now see that our foreground color is this color. Now if I paint, it will paint the selected color. Let's try and select another color. With my paintbrush tool selected, pressing alt, if I select this color, you can see that now this is our foreground color here. If I paint anything, it will be this color. I'll undo. This ability to choose a color instantly while we are painting is really really useful. There's also a specialized eyedropper tool here. This icon, if I click on this, we get this eyedropper tool with these options here. To explain you these options, I'll zoom in a bit tighter. When we hover over a particular pixel, the eyedropper will give us exactly that pixel. You can see the foreground color changing to that color. Now this point sampler means it is sampling exactly that pixel or that point like so. With these options we can tell the eyedropper to look at the surrounding pixels and give us an average of those surrounding pixels. Let's do a 3 by 3 average and now if I select this purple color you can see that it has loaded the blue color because it is taking an average of 3 by 3 surrounding pixels. We can also select a larger average 
फाइव बाई फाइव एलेवन बाई एलेवन सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ वी ऑल्सो हैव द एबिलिटी टू सेलेक्ट करेंट लेयर करेंट एंड बिलो ऑल लेयर्स एंड अ फ्यू मोर बट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स वी विल हैव टू कीप इट टू ऑल लेयर्स बिकॉज विद मेनी लेयर्स यू वॉन्ट टू सैम्पल दैट पिक्सल फ्रॉम ऑल द लेयर्स टू गिव द एग्जैक्ट कलर आई विल कीप इट टू पॉइंट सैम्पल सो फ्रेंड्स दैट वॉज अ लुक एट द वेज ऑफ सेलेक्टिंग कलर्स सी यू एट द नेक्स्ट लेसन